Today we have invited Dan Nelson to speak again. And he has chosen the intriguing topic of architect sound, chromatics, forms, and sacred numbers. Okay. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's you might have, yeah, it's just a, a couple of words that kind of relate to music and sound and frequency and a whole bunch of different things. So uh, why I came up with that topic was because I, the last time I talked here, I started with this idea of archetypes. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea, like give a talk on archetypes. And then I looked into it and it became <laughs> a massive topic. And uh, because it relates to everything in the known universe, as far as human beings and consciousness, everything we see in the universe uh, has to fit into the way that we perceive. It has to fit into patterns and uh, forms and ideas. So it's such a <laughs> huge topic. And so I had to break it up into 13. I found 13 different areas that would relate to archetypes. And so one of the areas was sound and light because they're related to frequency. So I thought, okay, well, I, I thought, well, this is gonna have to be at least 26 presentations long <laughs> to be able to even talk about this idea of archetypes. So um, I'll show you a little graph that I came up with that kind of represents all the topics that uh, came to mind here. Is there any way to make that bigger? Yeah, actually, can people see that? It's kind of a no, no. glossy. Can, can you know we close this? Uh, yeah. if, we, if we close those uh, yeah. drapes, then we'll probably see something here. Yeah. Can you make it full screen? Yeah, I'm doing that. Let's see. Uh, You can us imagine. Is. Okay, well. <laughs> Dan, before you start, can right. you just move the screen closer to yeah, you? Because the people up. on this side can't really see. Where? Make the screen part of the circle. Oh, yeah, that's Make it part of the yeah. circle. Like this? Uh, bring, the, yeah. bring the projector closer yeah. to the screen and then we'll get there. There. Uh, don't be so fussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, take it further away, maybe. Yeah, if we go further away, then it gets bigger. Yeah. So there we go. So I just came up with this image to represent all of the different things that came to topic when I thought of archetypes. So um, now I talked about this the last time I gave a presentation, so I went into each of these different levels of information and how they relate to archetypes. Um, so today I just wanted to talk about sound and light, but not so much light, but more sound. And it's going to be like an open discussion. We'll see what we come up with. Because it's such a huge topic that it's like um, asking somebody to give a presentation on everything. Okay, well then, you know, where are you going to start, right? So I figure since sound relates to everything, one of the most common primordial sounds that we could be familiar with is like, right in our heart. So when, thanks for that meditation, that was really beautiful, <laughs> because I could really feel my heartbeat. I could just feel that pulse, pulse, pulse. And that's like one of the most primordial beats or rhythms or sounds that we can relate to. So sound relates to all kinds of uh, different topics. So I came up with a whole bunch of stuff. It just all hit me at once. Um, so sound relates to cycles, it relates to uh, rhythms, it relates to harmony. And one of the numbers that I kept running into was this number uh, 432. Because 432 is one of these most sacred frequencies that everything maps into. Um, now, there's, there's so much to talk about. So here, here we are. Now sound creates vibration. So this is, what I'm showing here is something called cymatics. And so cymatics is the study of sound and how it creates form. So, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Just, oh, God, nice music. It's a lovely sound. Yeah, that was a nice sound. <laughs> I'm turning it on. <laughs> so uh, 
it's such a magical topic to talk about because sound relates to mathematics, it relates to geometry. And uh, Pythagoras studied geometry and mathematics and he kept noticing that the platonic solids and all the geometric figures we see in nature relate to this common number 432. So 432 also happens to be the original uh, scale, which is the A, the A scale. So if you're familiar with music, you've got the middle A, that's right, the middle A scale. And so that middle scale was originally tuned to 432 through different cultures around the world because it's a very harmonic uh, scale. Harmonic. Is that the pentatonic scale? Uh, no, see, I don't, I don't understand. Oh, oh, okay. Like maybe somebody else can answer that. Penta, pentatonic is on the piano. Okay, so is that the pentatonic scale? Yeah, it okay. is on the, this is on the black keys. So is that what they call that? Yeah, pentatonic. Right. Okay. So on the pentatonic scale, the pentatonic scale is is a, a scale that is universal, and I I did notice that that all of those chords mm -hmm. that we come up with are fairly universal, although people pick different scales. And different scales relate to different frequencies, nodal points of high vibration, of, of high consciousness. And those nodal points relate to sacred harmonies that resonate matter in very specific patterns. I have something to say to that. I used to be with people, or students, and even small ones, four-year-old. They could play, after the session of Suzuki, we did always play and the parents usually taped it and they meditated on it. Right. What we have been dealing with, playing on black keys. Right, right. Only on black keys, both of us, and I played with them. Yeah. And we have been playing from listening. Wow. And with some people, you went so deep. One person, one time, went to different lifetime. Yeah and to many places you can, they can, can go with it, right. if you allow it. The, the other scales are different. Right. They have different vibration. Yeah. But the pentatonic scale can be played non-stop. Right. And it is always harmony, certain level of harmony. Yeah, that's it's really interesting. Um, so in the pentatonic scale, A, A is 432, originally 432 hertz, that, that's how it was tuned. And that was tuned that way for a lot of mathematical reasons. So a lot of people today choose to set their middle point in A in the pentatonic scale at 432. Mm -hmm. Something happened in around the 50s where uh, some commission in the United States decided to change it to 440. But you'll notice that when it got changed to 440, this uh, resonant pattern was no longer coherent. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit out of phase with mm -hmm. the way that nature vibrates. Exactly. Yeah, so that's why a lot of people are tuning at 432, even though the American standard that got established in the 40, in the 50s or the 40s forced music to go to middle A at 440. Yeah. It was actually Hitler who started it. He right. broadcasted his radio broadcasts on 440. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, so right. that that, uh, <laughs> that connected with the Rockefeller uh, Commission too because they wanted to impose that new frequency. But, of course, that connects with a lot of reasons, and some people will definitely bring out that conspiratorial idea of the, you know, the war on consciousness. So that's been a pervasive uh, idea to control and manipulate consciousness. Sure, <laughs> you know, I understand that metaphor of a dark age culture that wants to control consciousness. Culminating in TED Talks, refusing to allow anybody to speak about consciousness. Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. Like Rupert Sheldrake or whoever goes on there, like, oh, you can't challenge mainstream scientific dogma. But, uh, you know, science has, be has become, or, and is becoming in certain fields, very dogmatic because it's holding on to a structure that's falling apart. But science is supposed to be about looking at nature and keeping an objective perception and taking in evidence and creating new theories based on new evidence. But mainstream science, in a lot of ways, because it's become like the Catholic Church, has become rigid. And if you're studying something like this, it's, it's going to be a lot harder to get funding because it's out of the mainstream consciousness, and that's very controversial. But in fact, a lot of these old scientific establishments are falling apart 
and we're noticing so many parallels to sacred geometry and to the pyramids and all of the uh, ancient structures around the world relate to this 432. Whether you go to Stonehenge, India, or if you go to uh, Egypt, but this this particular frequency is is so universal, and it's one of the most harmonic uh, frequencies yeah. in in the human consciousness. You can never, uh, I don't know what beings recognized as disharmony. You see, right? But it is uh, for some strange reason the pentatonic is always harmonic. Always not comes out in the way that would irritate. Right. Never come with irritation. Right. And the children loved it. Yes. Mm. Do you know what hertz it is, the pentatonic? What do you say? What hertz it is. Uh, many, the pentatonic scale. They, beats per second. Because I know what we're talking about now. We're talking about just that regular piano scale that everybody tunes to. So that, that middle A that people used to call 440, that's just... With with this with any scale, you have to pick a point. You got to pick a certain frequency. So the scale requires that you find a relative point, any scale. So in the pentatonic scale, then we choose the middle A, which is 432, and that was established amongst many different cultures that that would be the center. There's reasons why they chose that as a center point. And so when you relate the harmonic resonance of the universe, there's this thing called fifths, where those, uh, what do you call? Intervals. Those intervals, when you go up to, to another resonance, which is another octave, which represents another color, or another state of consciousness, or a chakra, they specifically relate to sacred geometry, and they specifically relate to different levels of consciousness. So when you go up by fifths, what that word you just used, what was it? An interval. Intervals. So when you Inter jump up in these intervals, they're all relative to that middle point, 432. As far as uh, scales, you when you double it, you're on the next octave. You double it again, then you're on the next octave. So where is the where is the pentatonic scale? What frequency? Well, it depends on what octave you're talking about. But as far you have to go with a consensus reality, so you have to choose the middle point as 440 hertz. It depends on which instrument. If they want to use instrument. In piano, it is very clear. Yeah, and the piano is very clear. It started, clear, started yes. by, we call it in, I don't know if it is here or if it is in Czech language, cis, like C above it, okay? Yes. Above C is the black key right. that is called cis, C I S, okay. in Czech language. Yes. I don't know so if that it like is here. So that's an A too. sharp then or something? Yeah, it's a, yes, it's like C sharp. Yeah, right, C sharp. C sharp and after D sharp and so on. Right. So, so, so you flat are flat flat sharp flat and flat. Flat. flats. That's what it is. I see. So it is in the in the on the piano it is very clear. Right. But you can do it in any instrument. Right. The the for the sound yes. is the same. The right. intervals are the same. Right. And so so that you can play it on many instruments. Right, right. And it is all the music from China uh -huh. or even uh, Japan. Right. Is built on pentatonic. Well, wow, isn't that amazing? So, yeah. so um, I just want to finish. Do you want to say something? Why is it called pento? Pentos and pento means. Well, it must be five because yeah. fifths. It has to do with harmonics. Five. That makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. So, um, yeah, what's? There are five of them. Two and three. So what's observed is that when you move in fifths, when you actually put those frequencies on into matter in the fifths, in those different intervals, you'll notice that um, you see more coherent patterns at those frequencies. So that's the way that nature likes to resonate at. So that's, that's very interesting to, to notice that. So um, it, it's, it relates to everything. It relates to cycles. And that 440 scale, um, it, it's just amazing how many things that connects to. I wanted to show a couple of videos about it, but our speakers aren't working, so we won't be able to show that. So we'll just have to go with the flow here. Um, so sound also relates to many things in nature, including free energy devices. Um, for example, 
this person uh, named Stanley Myers was able to use a very specific frequency to release hydrogen and oxygen from water. So in chemistry class, I don't know if anybody did this when they were in high school, but you take electrodes and you put them in water. And when you do that, it causes, when you put a high voltage in there, it causes the hydrogen and oxygen bonds to release from the water and they go into the air, right? So you have hydrogen and oxygen. Well, normally it takes more energy to get the hydrogen and oxygen out than you put in. So if you put 100 watts of electricity into the water, the hydrogen and oxygen that comes out only produces like 70 watts. So you're losing energy. But when you use harmonic resonance patterns, when you pulse the electricity into the water, it releases more hydrogen and oxygen than you put in. In other words, you're finding uh, what's called a, um, it's an overunity uh, system suddenly. So certain frequencies tap into a field that releases more energy than appears to be there. And many of these physicists have called that the zero point field. But there's lots of examples in nature where it happens. So one example is something called cavitation. So uh, cavitation is when you take a frequency, um, at, at high enough frequency into a substance, it releases a tremendous amount of energy. So like a shrimp has a little claw that goes whack, whack like, like that and there's little explosions that'll destroy the crab shell because it's tapping into this overunity force because it's at a certain frequency. Also, little stars have been created in water using specific frequencies. So you can also create a plasma with sound. So, and many would argue in the new field of studying the sun that the sun itself is a plasma vortex created by a, a, a frequency coming from the galaxy. So this, this connects with so many other things as well. And, uh, in the, I carry it for you. I was getting it yesterday from Grace. A special plant that I never have seen yet on this dimension. And someone carried me this plant. You can pass it around. Can we maybe just hear no, that? I, I wanted to put oh, no, it. I, just, I want us to, I this can be a, a, a completely flowing mm -hmm. Event because oh that's great well that's why we're going to talk about it because this there's so many things that this will connect to. I wanted to say that yeah. the only connection. Yeah, if you want to pass that flower around, that's wonderful. The vibrations is this, this is special frequency. That's why I am using the flower. Therefore, it is different frequency than the other flower. If you were a flower, you'd be dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yay. <laughs> So, um, one of the amazing things, I'm going to find a little slide here that explains. See, what we have here is the, is the music scale based on 432 being the A. When 432 becomes A, then all the other notes uh, fit into sacred numbers. So all these become sacred numbers that you see all around the world. If you were to put A at 440, which is what uh, that whole establishment wanted to control, what did you call it? It was designed by some military strategy or whatever to mm -hmm. make A440. But if A was 440, then all these numbers go out of phase. They become disharmonic. They, beca they don't become tight numbers. They became chaotic numbers. Dissonant? Uh, dissonant or uh, disresonant or uh, destructive resonant. Mm -hmm. So when you have constructive resonance, you are on those nodal points where, there's a, where it's very obvious where there's bands. And if you were to convert it to color, if you were to put those frequencies into the color visible light spectrum, then you, it becomes clear that these particular points line up at very obvious color, color nodes. Mm -hmm. So those color nodes relate to all of these different points, but can they also relate to sacred geometry and the platonic solids. Can, can you read out the hertz for the different tones? Yeah, because we can't, can't, can't read them. them. Okay, well, so what we have here is just the A, which they call the root in the pentatonic scale, which is 432. Are we so, talking A flat or A sharp? Oh, uh, just A, just flat. <laughs> Oh, right. Okay, so no, this is not sharp. I think when they say A, they just mean that's flat. That's not flat. That's not a black well, what do you note. call that then? Oh. Well, the black note has to either be A flat or A sharp. We're not, I don't, we're not talking about black notes. We're just talking about the root of A, wherever the center point is. What's that called? <laughs> it's just called the root. Maybe it's not specifically piano. It's just in general. 
Well, um, since instruments all around the world, they call these the tempered frequencies. In, or, in other words, when they were artificially changed to 440, you can see the disharmonic numbers. But middle root A, all the instruments were tuned to around the world originally, is at 432. So an octave below is 216, and an octave above is 864. Right. 216, that's a sacred number all around the world. Like when they built ancient temples, you often see 216 stones. Or if you were to multiply that number, um, you can you jump into roots of 144,000, which is a number of stones in the Great Pyramid. But you can see here, if I go to, what do we got next here? So there's D, which is the fourth, they call it, which is 288. F is 172.8. E is 648. And so, so I don't know, you guys can't see that, eh? Can you pull the table? They all, they, all, uh, they all add up to nine. Well, they all add up to nine. They all add oh my God. Add up to three. This is what's crazy is that all these numbers, well, another way to find out if they're harmonic numbers is, is if they all add up to nine. Wow. In nature, everything's harmonic. Dan, so the, 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 yeah. three, six, or nine. Oh my God. Yeah. Multiples of nine. Yeah. Right, exactly. <gasps> Every single well, that's, one of them in, in, in the room. Do you have the nine gift? <laughs> well, the, the, do I have the nine gift? Did you put it in? No, I. I so, no. so classical music that came before Hitler and stuff, it was kind of, that's why it's sacred music and the plant and the animal like the old classical music. Well, yeah, exactly. That's right, because all the classical yeah. music was so tuned at that frequency. Yeah. What does, what does a 216 uh, stone look like? How can a stone have a... <laughs> Do you know of the stones that have 216? Oh, yeah, in Cambodia. Um, I went to Angkor Wat and to the yeah. face in Angkor Wat in Cambodia, oh. the Bayon Temple. Uh -huh. um, there's every every statue has four faces, and there's I think it's I can't remember the, the numbers, but it, it adds up to 216. So there's 216 stones in the great face of Angkor Wat. Yeah, right. 216 stones. Not that the stone is faces on that one particular percent stone. So, um, yeah. if you go to the ancient Mesopotamian area, the cradle of civilization, and you look at um, the Sumerians, the Sumerians are what we've are what who established our base sixty system for time, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the way that they figured that out is just basically count the knuckles on your fingers on your left hand, mm -hmm. and then multiply that by the number of fingers in your right hand. So what you have here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you have 12 knuckles in your fingers on this hand, 12, very important number, 12 disciples. Multiply 12 times 5, then you have 60. This is why they determined that they would be 60 seconds in a minute, you know, and, and 12 hours in a day. 60 minutes in, in, in uh, an hour, right? And so also, the number... This all adds up to nine. So if you were to, f how many seconds are there in a day? When you actually figure it out, it adds up to nine. How many seconds in a week? Add all those digits, they add up to nine. And it, it just keeps going on and on and on. So um, the, the ancient Sumerians in their tablets, they said that they were given this number system also that relates to so many other things, like 144,000, they were given they were given that by they called the the sun gods or the um, they had a name for for these beings. They were <coughs> often called the Anunnaki. Or, there's lots of names for them, but uh, there's a consensus that they were called the Anunnaki that gave them all this sacred math. And so this is where a lot of our base system comes from. But it also relates to 432. So if you look at 432 on YouTube, you'll see probably hundreds, maybe thousands of uh, videos and documentaries related to that frequency that all relate to harmonics, to the universe, to the galaxy. You can figure out where all the planets are. Um, and the planets were discovered without actually seeing them based on harmonic ratios. So this is really remarkable <coughs> that Jupiter was discovered even before they could see it through understanding harmonic ratios, the size of our Earth, the size of the Sun, the size of the Moon, it was. It's quite remarkable that that, that was able to be figured so out. So that's that's how the go, the gold gordons or gordons in Africa knew about Sinai. Dogons. The dogons. dogons yeah. Uh, Sirius. Well, Sirius. yeah. Well, the yeah. dogons said they came from Sirius, right? 
Right. Right. So that's in Maui. And so they also brought that sacred um, math with them when they, <laughs> well, if it's true, they say they came from Sirius star system. When they settled in that area, um, they brought that math with them. So they have similar math. And they knew about Sirius before Western. Well, they knew about the, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because yeah, the yeah, Dogons yeah. had maps of the star system for Sirius A, B, and C. And they lived on a planet that had a 50 year orbit around Sirius C, but Sirius C wasn't even discovered until the 90s yeah, yeah, with exactly. the Hubble. Right, so they already knew. It was pretty obvious that they knew what they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. The, the Maori in New Zealand have been very much dealing with civilian energy. Right. And they have been having guidance that they have been guided to New Zealand right. through civilian energy. Right, okay. And then they have been having us meeting them with in dream. They yeah. came to me and they felt the same frequency yes. within me, of yes. Syrian. Yes. And they didn't want me to go. No, they recognize your frequency. That's right, yeah. yeah. And I was telling them I was not born in black or I was I'm mean, not Maori at all. Right. And they still uh, invited me to say <coughs> uh, different ceremonies. Yes. They gave me stones and right. and they didn't want me to leave New Zealand. Right, yes. They stood even on airport to still help sure. me. <laughs> yeah, I think they call them fallen angels because they're worshipping because they don't realize that they are that that they, they are they the are star seed. They number of them have been knowing that they are there. That's good. But sometimes we forget and we worship and we want to hold people down. That, that's right. So it was very interesting experience for me. Right. I was almost like kidnapped. <laughs> right. I couldn't, they didn't want me to buy tickets. Maybe you should have stayed there and not there. I couldn't <laughs> karmically, you know, therefore I have family here. So karmically I couldn't do it. It was not permitted. So the 12 signs of the zodiac are related to uh, all of the notes on the scale. They, they also, just like the signs in the zodiac, they rep the 12 archetypes are some of the most fundamental archetypes in the universe. And um, so they, the 12 signs of the zodiac relate to specific notes in the original pentatonic scale as well. But they also relate to the colors. I mean, you can see in so many different fields um, of science these 4, 432 connects to it. And one of the most amazing ways that it connects to it would be the platonic solids here. So for example, you can't see this, I'll read it to you though. So we, what we have here is the tetrahedron, which has got four triangles. And if you were to add all the angles, you would end up with 720, which is an F sharp. And uh, the 720 is a very sacred frequency. And then we have an octahedron, which has got eight triangles, which is 1440 which is F sharp again. So when you add the, all of the angles of the pentatonic solids, that's another way you can find that sacred pentatonic scale. And Pythagoras figured that out by accident, right? That it's like, wow, this really does correlate with these ancient music scales. No wonder they're using those scales because it's, it's universal. They it's holographic. Up to nine too. <laughs> well, they have to add up to nine. If, that's the other way you do a correction, right? Scientifically, you'd be like, okay, well, that adds up to nine. There's so many ways that this correlates as a sacred harmonic frequency in nature. Well, it, yeah. Another silly question. Where does this penta, penta whatever Pentaton come from? Who came up with that? Who came up with the pentatonic scale? I, I thought it might have been Pythagoras. Does anybody know the answer to that? Mm -hmm. I think I might have some information on Pythagoras here. I think it was God. God. <laughs> God, yes. Well, yeah, I mean, like, it was, it was discovered. It's not like somebody came up with it. It was discovered by many different fields. Many like it, different. All over the world. All over the world, all the different fields of science, it was discovered, right? That 432. So at this same point number, in time, who makes the decision? Like, say we yeah, want to yeah. go back to 432. Well, people are going back to 432. So now they're actually making... Um, you know those little digital things that you put on yeah. your guitar, the tuners? To tune it. A lot of the tuners wouldn't go to 432, so now everybody's making tuners that go to 432 wow. because there's a mass awakening yeah. and people realize that they want to tune in 432. Uh, children's singers now, there's a big wave where they're all tuning to 432 because they notice the kids respond to that mm. much, much better. It's pretty yeah. obvious. Mm. So that's why a lot of people are tuning their A instead of 440, 432, oh, nice. it's more harmonic. And you the can see it. Don't know that. You can actually go on YouTube and listen to some old records that right. are 
put oh, in 440 and they converted them into 430. Yeah, they, they, all you've got to do is pitch shift them back. Feeling, yeah. yeah. Wow. Any, any of the music you have, you could use computer software to pitch shift it back. You know, down that percentage to 432, and then it's back in harmony. Mm. She said somebody did it, so we yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Nice, thanks. For that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so all the pentatonic solids map into these into the pentatonic scale. So they also these these all relate to the chakra systems that we have in our body. All the chakra systems also um, relate to those numbers here, these sacred numbers. And that's how you do, when people do sound healing, pe most people who do the sound healing, they understand the 432. So that's what's used to en enhance certain chakra points in your body, like your heart chakra. Anybody know what the heart chakra frequency is? I mean, we can find maps, but it's, there's a consensus about where that is, but it makes sense that that would be the, this, the, 432. It is the, you will be starting this week, the group. You're starting a group the, the disc, back? This group, yeah. Okay. About putting hands on the body and doing different sounds. And you can actually find it through you. You can choose it to find different frequency with your hands. That they started to resonate much more. And each person is actually different. So we cannot put a certain level of control that, that throat chakra is only specific for everyone. It is not for everyone. Yeah, we in energy medicine we work. We say each person has a core note. That's right. And that's so interesting to me what he's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, we just get them to sing a scale, figuring that we'll cover the core note. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these particular frequencies not only do they create cymatic patterns, but they create movement and rotation. So the sounds themselves, the sacred sounds, create different types of spin patterns. And so this, you can actually see cymatic, in the science of cymatics, you can actually see the, mo the creation of little solar systems just with sound. And, but you can also see really amazing things like, I can show a video, but we won't have sound. I don't think we really need the sound so much. But there are certain frequencies that recreate the human vertebrae, for example. One of these frequencies that you, we saw in this map recreates a human vertebrae and even creates uh, dragonflies. Whoa. Like things in nature that we see all all over the place, like animals and different forms, are what you could call archetypes, but they fit into specific frequencies as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this plant, I was mentioning it, was having very different frequency. Mm. It totally changed the frequency. This is why I took it with me. <laughs> to go to to experience each person in different way. How did you experience it? What sound does the flower make? Did you get it? You can, you can only feel it within you when you do the sound. Uh -huh. You can start to feel it within you. I know, but what do what do you feel? What sound do you feel? When you I would have to do it. Oh, you have. I would have to do certain sounds and feel the connection. Oh, okay. But I am doing also flower essences, so I listen to the plants. You listen to that plant. And so that you do certain frequencies and you feel the connection. Mm -hmm. You know, I painted a lot in my life, mm -hmm. houses and rooms, and mm -hmm. when they are empty, yeah. when you shoot sound, yeah. all sorts of sound, all of a sudden you find the sound that the whole room starts to right. vibrate, yes, and then right. the yeah. body starts to that's, vibrate. That's right, that's and, right. And then you go in a closet and it's different. Yes. And, and so so every, every, every piece of matter and every object and every room Every space has a particular specific frequency. Yeah. Right, yeah, and when you... Does. These chairs, the... Exactly, yes. so everything has well, a frequency. Well, when you're in a room, you feel it go through you as you... It's, you well, that's right, because when you're in a particular room, and if you find that specific frequency, you can it's harmonize really with that frequency, and then you get the sympathetic resonance effect. That sympathetic resonance is where you have two notes that start sticking together, mm -hmm. like a warble. Mm -hmm. And when you hear that, it, it does start affecting consciousness, so you certainly feel uplifted. When you start hearing true sympathetic resonance, you, it's, it is like a psychedelic experience, whatever you want to call that. It's really remarkable when you start seeing how that works. So stepping from one note, when you add two notes, you get a, a phase lock in a sympathetic harmony, and that's the beginning of growing life. So 
when we look at sound, normally, if we were taught in mainstream physics, we talk about sound and light as being a wave like this. But the wave is never like that. It's, it's a spiral wave. It's yeah. a spiral wave. And not only is it a spiral wave, it has certain physical properties about it as well. There's actually a reverse wave and a forward wave, a transverse wave. And so when we understand sound, we can understand light. And certainly people who were working with those frequencies on the turn of the century, like Nikola Tesla, T. Townsend Brown, some of these inventors, understood nature as being spiral, light, sound. And again, when you look at photons coming from a star, we know that photons are moving in a spiral nature. They're not like this, and for so long we've been looking like this, like flat. Nature's not two-dimensional. So understanding that nature is like four-dimensional, multi-dimensional, we start looking at light as being a spiral. Not only is it a spiral, it has other properties about it as well. And a lot of new research is showing that genetic information can be moved through photons. It's a lot of research done in Russia shows that photonic energy carries with it genetic information. So somehow genetic information can move through light as well. And this is a new topic that connects with the morphic resonant field that Rupert Sheldrake discovered. So morphic resonance also is, an, is another type of resonance where information can move from one species to another through that uh, field, through that harmonic field. The harmonic field has a lot to do with the different species. If one species learns one trick, even if it's the other side of the planet, that other species learns that trick a lot better. That's another type of field of, of information that's related to harmonics. There's a fellow scientist, a biophysicist by the name of Dr. James Oshman. Yes. And he comes to energy medicine classes every year in yeah. Phoenix. And I was watching a video of him just a few days ago, and he talked about why Germany and Russia have moved on. Of course, my background is healing. Yeah. So that's what he's talking about. Yeah. They've moved so far and so differently. Yeah. He says it's because we, as a society in North America and in Europe, yeah. know so little about physics. We've gone into biochemistry, holus bolus, and we don't understand right. biophysics or quantum physics yes. at all. Right. To the point where we're still teaching our children and our medical students right. the view of a cell, right. which is at least 100 years out of date. Right. Right, yeah, exactly. Well, I, it's like a cell was independent, but you certainly take a holistic approach and you see how everything's interrelated, yeah. and you can't have one without the other. They're all having in relationships. You see, in, the, in Bohemia, I found, I don't know how, but it was through the line, obviously, two elders that they have been with me almost all the time. And they have been training how to listen to the plant how to connect the plant. And we did it always with sound. And first we asked for permission. Ask if we can even do it and be in it. No one ever is asking anywhere in the Western world for permission. And this is very important. Therefore, so that the plant would either open or not. And so I, I have been trained from childhood to listen. Listening just is about, listen. Yeah, so much is about the listening. Yeah, it is, it is a listen to it. If you're, if you're good at listening, you know the frequency of certain objects. That's it, yeah. And um, many people have, have intuitively known this. Some of the ancient lost arts had to do with understanding the frequency of objects. Some of the new physicists are now applying certain resonances to certain objects, which take mass away from the object, what's uh, called the cancellation of mass inertia, there's a, a guy in Vancouver, John Hutchinson, who has been using the Tesla coils and projecting them at objects, and that object will then lose its mass. So objects can lose their mass under particular frequencies. That's another part of knowing the particular resonance of any object, is that if you project that resonance, it goes into a harmonic phase where it loses its mass. Therefore, levitation happens, and it's just a byproduct of matching that frequency. So John Hutchinson has been working with this technology, but it's an ancient technology. Victor Schauber, the <laughs> levity sure. and, and gravity. Right. Together. Levitation created. devices with Victor Schulberger understanding the frequency of water, understanding the spiral nature of water, the spiral nature of nature. And the inversion of levity and gravity. That's really That's what made it. Well, you'll have to give a talk about that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah.
Yeah. It is uh, incredible. Uh, before we have been having those advices for water, I have also myself so many like stones and uh, many things in the water. You can actually do sound. That's I, how I, that's how I was traveling. My my what my water uh, cleansing system is based on Victor Schomburger's right. te technique. Yeah, yeah if you it's, spiral, it's spiral the water, just a, yeah. it's just a tube like that, and the water spirals up. Yeah. And it's amazing what a difference it makes. People that came to me said, "Oh, I, without me telling them, wow, well, your water has changed so much. It's fantastic now." Um, well, when you spiral the water, you charge the water, and there's YouTube documentaries. There's even a uh, a great TED talk about the fourth state of water, which has to do with charged water, um, harmonized water. And that harmonized water has a better uh, capacitance, it's got a better, uh, it's more wet, so your body absorbs it more. And with these particular, even Dan Winter made an implosive nozzle based on Victor Schulberger, but putting the water through that spiral charges the water, which also they've proven now in scientific studies that the plants grow two to three and a half times faster with this spiraled water mm -hmm. when it's taken out of a dead out of dead water. And Victor Schulberg understood this very well, that when you move water in spirals, it gets rid of pathogens. It creates a perfect resonance between cold and warm. So there's a cold and warm differential that's very subtle, but enough to create spin. So there's a whole art about j just understanding the nature of spin in water and resonance. And it also changes the uh, chemical makeup of the uh, the minerals you don't want in there, like uh, calcium and uh, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it expels it, it renew, regenerates it, itself. Yeah, it changes yeah. it changes into a, a com chemical formula that gets easier absorbed by our body because we want the calcium, of course, and uh, things like that. So I'll mention one other uh, free energy inventor. Um, what's his name now? Keeley, John Keeley. So John Keeley was the first, he was like the, um, it was like in the late 1800s where he was starting to craft pieces of metal in certain shapes like egg shapes and teardrop shaped pieces of metal that he would then hit with a certain note and it would create uh, a chain reaction in, in his little bubbles that he made out of metal would create a resonance with water that would keep going and he was able to produce over unity systems pumps that would just keep pumping and it was all based on cavitation which we now see in nature we see a lot of things in nature that are using this over unity principle and to mainstream science because they're you could easily be stuck and if you don't see where the energy is coming from you could say oh that's impossible it's perpetual motion it's breaking the law of conservation of mass or whatever you want to say but it's actually happening for real so these systems are tapping into what normally looks like is invisible, but what it's tapping into is the inward sphere, the implosive force. It's all, or you could call it the zero point field that Einstein talked about and many other physicists talked about. So sound does tap into the infinite energy source point. And when you study um, the new main, what do you call it now? It's called, uh, they call it heliospheric cosmoseismology, which is the study of the resonance <laughs> of the sun. But heliospheric cosmoseismology. For <laughs> so there's different um, fields in science that study the sun. What's that? I can relate to vibration, but I yes. cannot relate to that name. Well, because <laughs> co cosmo, heliospheric, helio means sun, spheric meaning the, the sphere, heliospheric, and cosmoseismology has to do with the study of the seismic or the resonance of that object. This is a good way to explain it. Yeah, so it's, it's good to just explain what, what these things mean, but then the, um, they call it the new physics, it's known as the study of plasma dynamics in objects in the solar system. Um, does anybody know that field that's being studied now all around the world um, about stars? Yeah. Okay, well, it, It'll come to me, maybe. But anyway, what we're learning is that the sun is a tuning fork um, for a higher field of energy. So for so long, we were talking about the sun as being, it's been, the model of the sun has changed over and over. Every 20 years, it changes. So we used to say, oh, it's, it's this, um, it's producing energy because it's, 
a nuclear furnace, right? So the nuclear furnace model has recently been breaking down in a major way because all of the satellites that are orbiting the sun are noticing that the, that, that model doesn't work anymore. So the new model is all about understanding the electrical dynamics, the electrical dynamo, the, the resonance, and the, the fact that it's actually a plasma in nature, not nuclear furnace in nature. So understanding the sun as being a plasma vortex uh, explains how it is that it can tap into a higher source field just the way sonoluminescence, which is the, the science of creating a plasma in water, the same thing that uh, different things in nature use to create more energy, the sun does the same thing but to a higher source field. The point of that is that we all have that in us. Is we all, if we tune into that same frequency, by analogy, if we become the sun, we tap into a higher source field of energy. Now, when we look at all the different frequencies, they're based in fractal sets. This can go on and on and on, but in, in the Vedic scripture, in order to tune into your light vehicle, you, many yogis must go into the center of the earth before they go into the sun, before they go to the, the, what they call the great central sun, which is the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, and, and you don't even need to do that. You can find a way to connect with a higher source field just through meditation, through refining your own frequency. frequency. You refine your own frequency, and you can do it through toroidal meditations, where you breathe in, and the energy goes down. You can actually see a spiral torus coming out of your temple and then moving out and coming down and coming back in through this through the lower chakra and you what you were just saying in your meditation <laughs> that same meditation is a way to tune yeah, in to, to your sp <laughs> specific frequency the, what is happening uh, this communication to plants I have very big aloe veras they are almost uh, very tall almost like people and they communicate to me with me and when I was giving them the Ormus water, they say no. Yeah. Therefore, they are Ormus itself. Right. This is interesting they, because... They, they, no, 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 no. Well, that's no, really no. good that you can hear that. Yes. Because most people can't hear that. <laughs> and uh, now people are putting instruments on plants and putting them on a computer to see what the plant is saying. Mm -hmm. So one of the first people that was doing that was Cleve Baxter. He wrote a book called The Sacred Life of Plants. Secret Life of Plants. So that gets into the science of understanding how to communicate with plants through uh, EEGs, electroencephalographs, that I guess Carl Jung first used to make the lie detector. But that that's very sensitive electronic equipment you hook up to a plant, and you can actually see the readout on the plant, how that plant is responding to your beliefs, your thoughts. To, to, to your insight. To, to and you. this is what I was not learning, but experiencing as a child. Yes. But we have been having different vegetation. Right. On the other side of the world, or different parts of the world, yeah. even in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. It was for me a game new. But generally, the new is not the connection. Yes. When, 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 I, when, I, when people... <laughs> Regis is saying that I should make big bottles of it. It is peace rose. The peace rose is very special rose. Yes. That is for... for for now, important. Rich is saying that everyone needs gallons of it, but I do not hear it. It, it is I gave them few drops to the to the essence. But the peace rose is now to to recognize our inner listening, which way to go. Yes. There are so many changes yeah. that we need to hear right. which way to go. And so the peace rose I always communicated and this year I bought it from Giorama and they sell for me, save for me, one piece rose that was dark red. What's normally it is normally it is rose. Normally it is pink and yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so and I was doing the essence from that dark rose. It was having two buds and only this year. And it was incredible, the communication. This is, okay, so I'll bring this into what you're saying, yeah. is that it's, it's so much has to do with listening. And uh, in, in nature, we want to like, control nature and destroy. But when we listen, we start seeing a new way to relate to nature, a new way to create technology. So, so much has been lost, clearly, but we're coming back to it by listening. Ironically, 
this industrial revolution brought us down a path of the objective method to try to break everything up into its little parts, but quantum physics and mainstream science and biology and all the information is coming full circle and to the point where we have the internet and we have technology devices to help us remember what we forgot. So yeah, we're now using technology to teach us things that we already know, but we've forgotten them. So now if we use technology, we can actually see what the plant is saying, but when we start using the technology a lot, we realize that we already know it. We don't need the technology anymore. This so, is what the, 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 I was trying, even though I couldn't handle it. Computer, yeah. you know, computer I cannot handle. Yeah. But the computer started to talk to me. Yeah, so the computer is another path. <laughs> exactly. Well, me, don't use me. <laughs> right, well there, well, there you go. Cause, but the, the technology will take us full circle back into remembering who we really are. Mm -hmm. So this is all about harmon harmonics, resonance, listening. And it's beautiful that science is bringing us back into this remembering place in the center of our heart. So what I'll conclude about sound is that we, yes, listen, <laughs> tune into our own frequency, and we don't need to study all this stuff because it's just telling us what we already know. <laughs> so just, just remember what we already know. Do, do the sacred geometry, look at sacred geometry figures, listen to sacred music in 432 that's based on that scale. We start remembering, no wonder they cut that off because if you have everybody self-empowered, how can you have a government that, would, like a dictatorship, wouldn't work very well? So certainly, we then can become self-empowered by going back into listening, getting tuned into the sacred frequencies and harmonics in our heart, and we'll all remember that we're one. Thank you.